In this video, I'll be testing 23 melee weapons from 23 categories to find the very best at clearing missions. I've put together a standardised build for them all, vetted and tested to be tough as nails. Weapons ranging from the Strofer to Quasus, Venka Prime to Glaive Prime. Which one is the ultimate melee weapon? I'm the Kengineer, let's solve a practical problem. First, the parameters. Each weapon is using the same build. This is a combo-focused hybrid crit and status build based around viral procs for enhanced damage. This isn't the optimal build for a melee weapon, but getting to a more refined build on all 23 weapons would have cost probably around another 40 plus former, and far more grind time than is needed for this comparison. If a weapon is championed with this build, it'll be champion maxed out. Primed pressure point is a matter of preference for many. I prefer having it over primed reach, but it's not necessary. And for a more powerful build, you'd ideally be swapping out the 6060 mods for pure elemental mods, which will get heavy on the former. I'll be running every weapon through E Prime on Earth on the Steel Path, using a purely defensive Rhino. This means I can avoid the vast majority of knockdowns, staggers, and deaths without adding any buffs to the weapons, nor debuffs to the enemies outside of the weapons. This is a pure test of the ability of the melee weapon. I've run every weapon at least three times through the mission, in many cases more times than this, due to interference from the Stalker or a rare death. All this to get a good sampling of the power of the weapon. And I'll be scoring these weapons based on kills per minute, giving a kill rating out of 100, where 100 is the best weapon out of all of them. So, starting from the bottom, we have the Glaive Prime, with a kill rating of 60. Glaive Prime and all Glaives recently got a suite of buffs affecting how they work. Treat it like a normal melee, like I've done for this test, and it will suffer. Instead, Glaive Prime really benefits from having a secondary weapon to land status procs before you hit, enhancing condition overload. Also, making use of the new Glaive mods will let it deal AoE damage more readily than having to rely on using your pure combo. I tested this as well on my livestream at twitch.tv slash thekengineer with some viewers, and found that even with status secondary support, the Glaive still suffered compared to other more reliable melee weapons. Also with a kill rating of 60 is the Strofer, representing Gunblades. Strofer is a great weapon for clearing even somewhat strong enemies at the longest of ranges for melee, and is devastatingly good in packed corridors due to its innate punch through. However, the pure impact base damage seriously hampers Strofer's ability to keep up with other options, meaning you trade out a lot of potential for that range bonus. This is true too for the Redeemer Prime, which fares slightly worse than the Strofer. Next, with a kill rating of 62, is Hirudo. This sparring weapon features Puncture as its primary damage type, which is not overly effective at killing enemies. Hirudo does have some powerful support, giving lifesteal on critical hits. Given you'll be dealing near permanent crits, this means you'll get almost constant healing from your attacks with the melee weapon, but this healing does come at the cost of damage. Pennant, a two-handed Nakana, also comes in at a kill rating of 62, again owing to its puncture damage. Pennant's unique quality is that it gains substantial attack speed on getting heavy attack kills. As this kills the combo meter, however, this feature doesn't help out at all without some focus on combo, either that's in combo gain or combo efficiency. With an appropriate build for heavy attacks, or a support of the Riven, this could be more powerful, but overall Pennant is lacking behind the competition. Ninkondi Prime represents the Nunchakus, with a kill rating of 65. It innately has a substantial amount of electric damage. However, it has a somewhat subpar choice of stances, meaning it's not an ideal damage dealer for melee. You do have the option of turning the electric damage into radiation with heat, or corrosive with toxin, though you must consider carefully what you're losing to attain this. Stepping up a notch then to kill rating of 66, and representing rapiers, is Destreza Prime. Like the Pennant and Hirudo, Destreza Prime is primarily a puncture weapon. All rapiers are puncture in fact. This combined with positive but not exciting stats, limits the higher damage potential for this weapon. It does, however, have a very fast finisher animation though, for sneakier playstyles. Karist Prime is the top of the one-handed dagger category with a kill rating of 72. It came out with Inaris Prime and boasts high innate toxin and slash together. 
Sadly, the actual capabilities of the weapon limited capitalizing on this. All weapons in the dagger category can benefit from the Amalgam Argonac Metal Orgo mod, equipped to the primary weapon, the Argonac, but in testing this had a limited actual improvement for the Karis Prime. It did, however, allow it to make short work of Noxes, but that's about it. Moving back to non-elemental weaponry, and representing whips is the Atarax with a kill rating of 73. This Grenier weapon seemingly has writing on it in Grenier text, Meat Blender, which is an accurate description of how it fights. Despite a high slash component, it's still in the lower half of the melees, but it packs a fair punch. The Quasus, another recent release with Deimos, takes the top of Warfans with a kill rating of 74. This curious Warfan will throw spines out on heavy attacks, made more accurate by Zaku, but if you're looking to have a hybrid combo build, those heavy attacks aren't so desirable. For those who do plenty Deimos bounties, this weapon's blueprint is fast challenging Oberon pieces for excess needless copies as they drop ridiculously often. If you do want to make use of the heavy attack on this weapon, it does have a guaranteed slash proc on those spines when they hit, so that may be something viable to look into, but overall, rating a 74. Representing hammers, and just shy of the middle of the range, it's the Kuva Shield Egg, with a kill rating of 75. First, full disclosure, my Kuva Shield Egg is not a 60% bonus weapon, as I simply do not have enough power in my soul to have ground that out for this video alone. So the maximum rating will be a little bit higher, but not hugely. The innate impact damage holds this weapon back, though the right choice of bonus elements can make all the difference. Outside of prime weapons, a 60% Kuva Shield Egg is as close as you're going to get to the best option. And due to the increase in max mod capacity with former, it's also easier to get a maxed out build onto this weapon. But if you do have access to the prime weapons or are happy to trade from other players, let's keep going up. Representing the best of the puncture weapons in the dual dagger category is Fang Prime at kill rating 76. Fang Prime has the unique bonus of increasing your movement speed by 5% while active, which really makes all the difference. Except it doesn't. Against armoured targets especially, puncture simply doesn't keep up. For one-handed swords, most of everyone has the Broken War. About one-fifth of my clan has it as their most used melee weapon. But the best one-handed sword is actually the Dacra Prime, with a kill rating of 81. Curiously enough, the Dacra Prime doesn't actually have a standard version, one of very few weapons to buck the trend of priming an existing weapon. Slash focus, Dacra keeps up reasonably well, but it's a bit behind the curve compared to other slash weapons. Stepping fully into the better half of weapons then is the Jack Kusa, a blade and whip weapon with a kill rating of 81 as well. This weapon has innate heat damage, which works well at both reducing armor and dealing damage over time, benefiting it among the dominating slash category. Leave your enemies real crispy. Just above that is the Teko Prime, a fists weapon with kill rating 82. Now, personally, I couldn't tell you the difference technically between sparring and fist weapons, but there is one here, so that's just how it rolls. Teko, being a signature weapon for Atlas, does benefit from a small status chance bonus in his hands, but that's hardly making a difference here. Now what's better than one sword? Two swords! Representing that is the Dual Keras, with a kill rating of 84. This is Korra's signature weapon, and a satisfying amount of slash damage to boot, though most likely if you're running Korra, you've got a certain Whipclaw in mind for damage instead, even after the minor nerf she received recently. Also, with a kill rating of 84, and taking sword to the extreme, is Grand Prime, a heavy blade weapon. Heavy blades have a great forward attacking maneuver to spin up to five times in a row, smashing everything along the way. Definitely contributing to the good score on the Grand Prime. Isn't it ironic though, the biggest weapon of all, rather than being called Ton, is called Gram of all things. For the staves, the top contender is the Taipedo Prime another slash-based weapon with a kill rating of 86. With easy-to-handle stance moves, Taipedo Prime is a relatively consistent weapon to use. Technically, it has lower DPS than the Bow Prime, but the difference is marginal, especially compared to the power of Slash over Bow Prime's impact. I'm not clued in enough on weapon categorization to know what makes pole arms and staves different, but with a kill rating of 87, the recently released Gwandol Prime is the best pole arm. Unique to this melee, it has a base combo duration of 6 seconds rather than 5. 
It's not quite a Zoris, true, but it's a bonus all the same. We're getting to the top of the curve now, because in 5th place, representing Scythes, there is the Reaper Prime with a kill rating of 89. This melee is actually the first ever Prime melee released, and as a result has no starting polarities, which I can tell you is quite frustrating when you've got 23 weapons to set up. That aside, part of what makes this weapon so good in the first place is the stance that it matches, Reaping Spiral as this helps to deliver additional slash procs on top of the innately high slash of Reaper Prime. Rising to 4th place, and ending the 6th weapon streak of slash weapons, we have Silver and Aegis Prime, with a kill rating of 93. This sword and shield weapon has innate fire damage, but can also pair with the stance final harbinger to add in slash procs too, massively improving the weapon's overall capability. Sword and Shield weapons like Silver and Aegis Prime gain additional crit and status chance on blocking attacks as well, helping you to further raise the capability of this weapon higher. Sitting pretty in a very close third place, kill rating of 98, it's the one-handed Nikana, Nikana Prime. In itself, this weapon is a punishing slash beast, which will cut through the enemies with no problem. In addition to this though, Nikanas like the Nikana Prime are compatible with the Amalgam DiQ Target Acquired mod. So long as you're happy to equip the DiQ Primary, you gain constant lifesteal on your melee attacks with this setup, adding a sweet extra to an already devastating weapon. Just a hair off the top then, with a kill rating of 99, Venka Prime is the Queen of Claws. This weapon is again a master of slash with a very potent stance set. Also, Venka Prime uniquely dials up to 13 times combo multiplier, although this doesn't actually enhance Weeping Wounds or Blood Rush any further than usual. You really do hold the ferocity of Valkyr with this weapon. And so, taking the top spot, setting a standard of full 100 points for kill rating, and Lord of the Tomfers, which is a word I didn't know before Warframe, it's the Cronin Prime. Not only is this the most devastating of all the weapons, clearing the mission more than one and a half times faster than Strofa, it also grants a 10% bonus to bullet jumping, really letting you leap into action. What really makes this weapon shine is that all the stats align to give a very high slash chance and damage, plus the stances available make proccing slash incredibly reliable. With a couple slash and a couple viral procs, every enemy that isn't an ox can be left for dead. So really then, if you want to have a powerful melee weapon, get crits, get status, and get slash. And if you want the best of the best, get the Cronin Prime. Now if you have enjoyed this video and want to see more, do hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel as well, make sure to subscribe. I'm always listening to your comments on what else you would like to see, including things like a video on companions or the new infested kit guns. So absolutely do keep letting me know what you love to learn about, and it may just be the next thing I put together for you. And as always, build combo, proc slash, and fight well, Tenno. Hold up. Detecting glass resonance. It's close. What? Oh, come on. Nora, no. Just no. <laughs>